Hello to everyone listening and welcome to RegTech Live with Clause Match. The aim of these sessions is to provide you with a 10 minute live discussion around technology and compliance, speaking with leading industry experts every Thursday lunchtime at 1 p.m. Today, I'm really pleased to be joined by Olush Kayakan, a GRC specialist, strategic advisor and RegTech thought leader. Olush, thank you for taking time to speak with me. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and maybe currently what's important to you? Perfect. Hi, uh, pleased to talk to you as well. Uh, hello, everyone. So, yeah, um, as Freddie mentioned, um, I'm a technology uh, passionate, actually. So uh, after 20 years in institutional and corporate banking, um, I wanted to work in jeans and sneakers. So I went to the uh, RegTech FinTech world for a couple of years in order to really continue to, to help the financial institutions with uh, tech adoption and make their, their life e easier, actually. And um, now uh, I'm still continuing it with uh, as a strategic advisor where I help financial institutions uh, with the latest trends, understanding of their needs and the technology adoption. Great, thank you. So I follow a lot of your thought leadership content. I think it's great, by the way. Um, and a common topic that you have some great insights on is around data management and how it ties in closely with effective RegTech adoption. Would you be able to um, share some insights on why data management is so important? Well, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, more and more, I was, I, I've gone in, in depth to, to technology and the needs of, of insurers, asset managers and banks. I've seen some of myself, okay, we're in the 21st century and what's really the, their, their biggest needs. It's really that for the moment, we're living in a chaos situation. It means that these financial institutions, they have their legacy systems, but they're also having a lot of co communication with the outside world. I mean, uh, they're not alone anymore. There's the open, open banking, overseas, international uh, subsidiaries, uh, counterparties, providers, and, and everybody has its own uh, systems everybody have its its own data structure and everything is actually uh, going on back and forwards uh, you have manual uh, regulatory processes also as well machine readable ones and nothing structured and 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 it creates a lot of um, energy loss and and yeah chaos i would say uh, so that's really where data management becomes really really important i think to get uh, everything harmonized and structured. I couldn't agree more. I think it's super important. I mean, big businesses, small businesses, um, it doesn't really matter. The data is spread all over the place and uh, without it being in a structured format, uh, it's really hard to do anything valuable with it. Um, mm -hmm. How can you actually maybe achieve um, effective uh, data management um, with RegTech adoption? Yeah, so there is one standard which is called CRISP, uh, uh, crisp DM, it's uh, a big buzzword, which, which means cross-industry standard process for data management. Right. And I think that the regtechs and fintechs who are successful get the idea on it. It's that everything begins, actually it's a circle, and everything begins with the business understanding. And once that you get the business understanding, then you have to understand the data uh, that you're, uh, you're processing. And over it, once that you have these two uh, processes totally analyzed, you go to the data preparation, which is interfaces, structuring, harmonizing everything, and uh, launch your model or your platform uh, in order to create a, a, a solution. So once the team you implement it, and then you deploy it. And everything is actually inter, uh, in, in, interacting with, them, with, themselves, with themselves. So the, the idea is that successful RegTech adoptions have to begin for me uh, via business understanding. And these are really the, the, the companies who really get the idea, okay, uh, rather than begin to with the products, with the platform, with the fact that the technology is awesome and what we can do with big data, it's that, yeah, will they use it? What's their, uh, what's their current reality? And everything has to begin with, with the business understanding, I think. Great. So, no, that makes complete sense. And thank you for sharing us um, more about that model. Um, I've not actually um, really looked into that, so I'll definitely make sure I do. Um, I want to go back to data management, but I also want to touch on something. So I, I think with your experience, you've actually 
benefited from, as you said, working both in the technology vendor side, working for a reg tech company, as well as the buyer side, that is financial institutions. With that in mind, what do you think would be the ultimate formula that differentiates a successful GRC or reg tech company from the masses? Yeah, as I said, based on what I see, there are something like uh, 500, 500 great techs in the, in, in the world. Uh, I think the top 20% and really understand the fact that technology alone doesn't go anywhere at all. You have really um, to have uh, the, the subject matter experts and business experts within your structure or via partnerships or with other red text fintechs uh, or, uh, or uh, I would say with banks or, or, or consultancy companies. Um, so this is really, I mean, this is really, I think, the key. Uh, you have to have the, the knowledge. If you don't have it because you're specialized, you're a small company specialized, in a niche market, you can get the knowledge by, by a partnership and, uh, and and go there. And once that you have it, I think that's really the key formula. It's really technology plus uh, expertise, plus the data, data knowledge and data expertise, I would say. That's uh, great. I mean, my personal experience, um, I think you're completely right. Um, um, more specifically with larger projects. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's some reg techs that are sort of point solutions that you can get away with just using their technology and uh, it can provide sort of a quick value add. But for big sort of enterprise deals, um, you need to be partnering with uh, SME advisory services um, so that they firstly actually understand the requirements because more or less most SME uh, advisory services have already worked with the client. So they understand the business. Um, and then being able to actually work with um, sort of mediating the whole implementation process and uh, providing that lending hand. So completely agree. Um, going back to data management, what are some good examples of effective data management in RegTech? Um, I mean, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but in terms of some examples, uh, could you provide us some effective examples, whether that's in sort of KYC or AML? Um, have you got any sort of... You're, you're, you know, it's, it's, it's really important because in, when you say that in most of the of asset managers, banks or insurance companies now, there's a new concept, which is the post-implementation care cycle, which means that these guys think, okay, I have a new software, I have a new fintech or I have a new uh, solution. And uh, right after it, I will have to get a new project with the post care because there will be uh, uh, errors or, or, or implementation issues. And that's, I think it comes from the fact that uh, the implementation and the business model was not properly uh, understood. Right. And I, uh, what I see is that I think for a successful um, implementation, you really have, first of all, you have to understand what the Rectech or fintech is doing. Right. You know, uh, everybody's talking about descriptive anal analysis, prescriptive analysis. So it's what what are they uh, what are they uh, what are they doing? So when they say, okay, we're doing predictive uh, analysis, what is, it, what is it? Is it uh, classification? Is it regression? Is it causal modality? Which means that we analyze uh, an event A and we see that each time that there's a transaction in uh, in Iran, there's a, a anti-money laundering potentially occurring in 90% of the cases. I'm giving an example. Or is it more a descriptive processes, which is, okay, uh, I do profiling, um, uh, I, I do cause, uh, I do um, co-occurrence grouping, uh, clustering, similarity, similarity matching, but you really have to explain in simple terms what your system does. Then, the, uh, the users, the deciders, the procurement, legal compliance of your clients can understand and see, okay, what will the system bring to me and how I actually can it help me manage my, uh, my matter. And this is what I see in, uh, you mentioned KYC AML in most of the successful K KYC AML projects. It's really, first of all, understand what is it? Uh, what are they trying to selling me? Is it does it satisfy my needs and then uh, then go forward with it. 
No, I mean, that, that's really sort of insightful and really helpful uh, for me personally. And I also think another thing that needs to be, that's important to be considered is uh, what type of data we're using, what is the data model, but actually if we're implementing this reg tech, how does that actually impact my current um, uh, ecosystem of data? Because there's no point in it uh, working in silo uh, of one another. So there's all definite, really important considerations to make. Um, we're already at the 10 minute mark. And so thank yep. you so much for sharing some amazing considerations on uh, insights uh, and the importance of data management with reg tech adoption. I also really agree that um, for successful reg tech companies uh, to uh, implement sort of larger scale projects, I think coupling technology with SME advisory is super important. Uh, my personal experience um, uh, is that it works and it, and, uh, uh, it should be, partnerships should be created. Um, and I, I, I think it's really important. Yeah. Um, so thank you for sharing all of the, your insights there. I really enjoyed the conversation. It's a real, it was a real pleasure. Thank you very much, Dan. Take Cheers. care. Thank you all for listening today. Please do uh, join us again.